Welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture 4.9 on generating random numbers. I'm Professor Stanley Chen. Today we're going to look at the last topic of this chapter, which is how do we generate random numbers according to a specific distribution. So if you look at this outline, you can see that we have gone through several commonly defined random variables. But of course, there are many other random variables. A computational question that we want to ask is that suppose I give you the probability distribution function, the density function, or the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. How would you generate random numbers according to the PDF or the CDF? Now, for some specific random variables, of course, there are built-in commands in MATLAB or Python that you can call and just generate random numbers using those commands. But there are other distributions which may not be that common. So we ask, how do we generate random numbers according to those distributions? A very simple example would be, I have a histogram that I want to generate data from. And I ask, uh, according to this histogram, generate maybe 10% of the samples according to uh, this value, 30% uh, according to that value. Uh, how would you generate random numbers according to the histogram that I asked you? So this section is about addressing the problem of generating random numbers. Generating random numbers have a lot of applications, uh, which we will discuss towards the end. For example, uh, if you want to verify whether your algorithm is working or not, having the ability to generate random numbers according to some distributions would be very, very helpful. Without further ado, let me start by giving you the general principle of generating random numbers. This is a diagram that we have seen in the previous lecture on uh, transformation of random variables. As you can see in this diagram, uh, I am starting with a uh, random variable uh, u. In this case, this u is a uniform random variable. Uh, the uniform random variable has a PDF that is a boxcar function. If I integrate, I will be able to get a uh, CDF, which, which is a, uh, uh, a linear function uh, during the interval uh, where you have a non-zero value for the PDF. So this is A and B in this case. So I start with a uh, uniform uh, random variable. And uh, this uniform random variable is actually very easy to generate. Um, basically, on any computer, you will have access to a random number generator. In, in most of the cases, uh, those random number generators will be generating random numbers according to a uniform distribution. Typically, this A will be uh, 0 and B will be 1. Uh, so this is very easy to access on computer. So I put a check mark here. Now, uh, the ultimate goal is that I want to uh, generate random samples that has a PDF that looks like this. Okay. Now, this is, of course, it looks like Gaussian distribution, but pretend that I don't have um, a way on my computer to generate Gaussian random variable. Uh, I can only generate uh, uniform random variables on my computer. So how do I generate a distribution that looks like this? Well, uh, I know that uh, if this is the PDF, if I go backward, I will be able to integrate and find the CDF. And the CDF, of course, is a cumulative sum, so you start to integrate the area, and then you will increase the value on the CDF. So that is something that I can do. Now, uh, let's look at this orange line again. So suppose I start with this um, a uniform distribution, and then I draw samples according to this orange distribution. What I will be able to see is that I will be able to get random samples. Then, uh, of course, they are random, right? And therefore, the the position of these random uh, yellow dots they are uh, they are not guaranteed to be uh, equally spaced. But on distribution level, uh, they should be uh, equal. Okay. So you may not exactly have have uh, this and that circle being exact same distance, but uh, over with a long enough trial, uh, then you can see them uh, in terms of statistical distribution, they are evenly distributed. So that is uh, because I'm generating these yellow dots according to a uniform distribution. 
Okay, so these yellow dots are given to you. You can generate on the computer. And now let's go back to this diagram here. Uh, this is the thing that you want. You want to have these yellow dots to follow the distribution that you want. Okay, so now how should I do? Well, uh, essentially we're asking uh, what would be the function, okay, the red function which is currently missing uh, in this diagram. Um, but I do want what? Well, I do want to transform these yellow dots through some unknown uh, red function which we are going to find out. And after this transformation, uh, the yellow dots will now have a different spacing uh, which will be generated according to uh, this blue line. Okay, so let's look at this blue line. The blue line says that I will want to have more samples that are, are allocated in the middle and fewer samples that are allocated at the tail. Okay, and therefore if you have the CDN, the CDN will have a sharp uh, slope uh, in the middle and have a lower slope on the two ends. And now if you go back one step, uh, the, the sample should have more uh, space between samples on the tails and you should have more concentration of samples in the middle. And then we go backward again to this curve. We ask if I start with this uniformly distributed samples, how am I going to get to this uh, uh, a compression in the middle and then, uh, and then, uh, and then a relaxation towards the tail? Well, one possibility is that you have a function that looks like this where you just squeeze all these samples in the middle and then towards the tail you just make them uh, smoother right so if you have a graph function that looks like this then uh, ideally you would be able to turn all these yellow dots into these yellow dots where the distribution have have a uh, will be generated according to the blue okay so in terms of the um, programming if we are able to come up with this red line Okay, and let's say this red line is a function g, uh, it's a magical function that we need to find out. But you can just uh, generate u, okay, from uniform. That's something you can do on a computer, uh, and then and then you apply this uh, g onto this u. G will be this function, and you call this y. Uh, then y will be generated according to this blue line. Now, of course. Uh, starting with the blue line, the, the blue distribution, you, you, need, you need to find out this, this G. Okay? But if you are given a G, then uh, by following these two steps, uh, you will be able to generate a random number that will be uh, drawn according to the distribution of this fx. So what is this G? Well, uh, it turns out that this G is this fx inverse. Okay? So this is the main result that I'm going to show you. Okay, so what is the main theorem here? The main theorem says that uh, this tra transformation G is uh, just this F inverse. Okay, what is this Fx? Well, as Fx, it would be a uh, it would be the distribution that you want. Okay, so that would be the distribution that you want, and, and this capital F will be the CDF of, of this distribution. So let's say you you want to generate random numbers according to a Gaussian, you will have access to this small fx, and the CDF you will also have access to. So I assume that you will have access to, uh, to both. Okay, so what is the theorem? The theorem says that g is equal to f inverse on, on this u. Here the u is a dummy variable, so you tell me the u and then I will be able to tell you the inverse of this f. Okay, so at this point, you may wonder, wow, this is a very magical result. How, how can you uh, show that this, this g function uh, is, is the inverse of the CDF? This seems like uh, something that comes from the Mars. Uh, it's actually not. Uh, here, here, here's the reason. Okay, So uh, there are two parts of this argument. The first argument is that what is, this, what is the, uh, the distribution of u? Well, you generate u according to a uniform distribution from 0 and 1. Alright, so now what is u? Well, I know f u will just be a uh, function and the CD and the PDF, uh, it will be from 0 to 1 with a height of 1. That is the PDF. Uh, now how do I get the CDF? The CDF will just be uh, 0 everywhere. Okay, and then when it goes to a 0, you will go to go up and it will stay at 1. So that would be my uh, CDF and then this is my PDF. 
and this CDF of course uh, during this range uh, F u of uh, small u is, is just u okay so that would be the uh, uh, CDF and now you have the CDF here that so that's the uh, CDF of your u now I want to have a, uh, a random variable uh, y okay so I want to find the uh, um, um, distribution of y okay uh, what I'm doing is that uh, according to my um, uh, uh, setup I this is my set first step and then my second step would be to um, define y equals to a g of u and uh, I want to find out this g of u all right um, and so uh, what I want to do is that uh, I want to first find out the PDF or P, uh, CDF of Y first, uh, write it in terms of the G, and hopefully I will be able to uh, link it back to this FU and FX. Okay? Um, Alright, so now let's try to evaluate the CDF first. The CDF of Y, uh, if we do it properly, then the CDF of Y uh, will be given by probability of Y less than Y. Right, which is this equation here and this is the uh, uh, probability that your g of u is less than or equals to y now uh, why is this? well this is because I have uh, the, the steps that I am going to follow would be to pass this u through a transformation and then I'm going to get y and this transformation is g so I can just define this y as g of u and then what do I have? Well, this g of uh, u, g of u, is um, according to my choice. Okay, I'm going to say that what if my g is indeed uh, this f x uh, inverse. Okay, so I'm going to, to just pretending that uh, I have I, I know this uh, g is f inverse. Okay, so let's say I really put this f x inverse into here. Um, and I want to check whether eventually this will give me uh, fx of, of y. Okay, now why am I doing this? This is because if, if this is the right choice, and if I plug it in, then the distribution of uh, y should be the same as the distribution of x where x is something I you ultimately want because this is fx and then I am defining a variable y equals to g of u if if the pdf or cdf of this y is the same as the pdf cdf of this x then that means I have already found this, this, uh, this functional transformation, this g so let's just continue this derivation and by uh, plugging in our um, our guess or our hypothesis. Our hypothesis is that this g is indeed this fx inverse and plug it in and see if it works. Now if you plug in, uh, you can see that this derivation will go to probability of, of u less than fx uh, of, of y. Okay, so now what is this? Uh, this is this is just the inversion of of this f x. So assuming that this f, this capital F uh, is invertible, then you will be able to do this transformation. And then this is just the uh, uh, the CDF of the random variable u. Okay, so this is the uh, CDF of the random variable u. This is uh, the f u of whatever you're trying to evaluate. Okay, and then um, because you can just treat this as the uh, as a value for the u, and so this is a random variable in terms of u, and so you have this f u. What is f u? F u is something that you have already calculated. It's just the linear function u here, and therefore anything you plug in will come out. It will have it will be f x of u, uh, f x of well, y. So you see that we actually land on to the exact same uh, conclusion. Okay. So what do we have? Uh, we have found that this uh, distribution of uh, random variable y, which is according to my definition is g transformation of u, 
and our hypothesis is that this g is equal to fx inverse. We plug this fx inverse, which we put it in, we showed that this fx uh, is equal to this fy. Okay, and therefore we can conclude that this uh, g is indeed uh, fx inverse. So if you plug this fx inverse back to this diagram, um, you notice one thing. Uh, here is my uh, CDF. This is my CDF. This the, the transformation is just this CDF's uh, inverse. So G is F X inverse. Okay. So whatever you are uh, you have uh, here, uh, you just take the inverse mapping of this F X. You'll be able to find the G. So in, in fact, this transformation is very easy to derive. If I have a Gaussian, I just invert the Gaussian. If I have exponential, invert the exponential. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show you some examples. You can see in principle, if you have an e equation for your for your PDF fx, uh, you will be able to do this uh, transformation of a uniformly distributed random variable and turn it into an arbitrary distributed um, random number. All right. So uh, in terms of um, uh, programming, uh, the programming I'm showing you a, a particular example here. Uh, let's say uh, with some um, paper pencil work, I can f show that this fx inverse is given by this expression. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples. Then, uh, in terms of programming, you just need two lines. The first line is to generate a uh, sequence of random numbers. Okay, here I have 10,000 uh, samples. And then I do this transformation according to this um, expression that I found. Then the variable y will have the distribution according to the, the uh, fx that I want. Now, I guess some of you are still puzzling how we can actually do this work in, in practice. So here are a few examples. The first example is to generate Gaussian random variables uh, uh, with certain mean and variance. Of course, on computer nowadays, you can generate Gaussian random variables for free. You can, uh, on MATLAB, you can type a uh, um, random number with a uh, you know, normal distribution. You can specify that. Uh, but just imagine that you have some other forms of distributions, which is not necessarily Gaussian. Uh, then uh, this example will show you the same way of generating numbers. So if this is a, a Gaussian random variable, then what is the CDF? What the CDF, as we have discussed a few lectures back, the CDF of a Gaussian random variable uh, will be will have this form, okay? Where this phi function is the um, is the uh, CDF of a standard Gaussian, and then you offset by mu, and then you uh, scale it by sigma. So that would be the CDF of a Gaussian according to mu and sigma square. So you ask, well, according to our theorem, what is my g? My g is equals to f x inverse. Okay, uh, and so if you plug this fx inverse, you, you, what do you do? Well, uh, you can you can set uh, this um, phi function x minus mu divided by sigma. You set it equals to u. Okay, and then you uh, you you invert this function, so you have a phi inverse of u, and then you have x minus mu divided by sigma, and then you move around the terms, so you have uh, x equals to uh, phi inverse of u uh, times sigma and then plus mu. Uh, so that is how we uh, we land onto this expression. This this is your uh, f x inverse. So uh, on computer, how do you do? Well, on computer, first of all, you generate a rand number of uh, uh, let's say a thousand samples. All right, and then you call this as your uh, uh, u u equals to random number. And then you say, okay, I want to generate this y. Y would equal to uh, this uh, sigma times this uh, phi function inverse of my u uh, plus mu. Okay. Uh, on MATLAB, there's a thing called the ICDF, uh, which is the, uh, the inverse CDF uh, of uh, several distributions, and you can specify a Gaussian. Uh, then you can do this calculation. Um, now, in terms of the picture, and um, this is the uh, CDF of Gaussian, and then here is the transformation. Essentially, you, you're just uh, uh, taking the inverse of this function. 
Okay, so that is the idea. You can see that this function is sort of like the flipped version of, of this fx. Now let's work on another example. Here is an example for the exponential distribution. So you have uh, random numbers from 0 and 1, and then the CDF of this uh, uh, exponential distribution would be 1 minus e to the power minus lambda x. Uh, then, then you ask what is the uh, transformation? Well, that's easy because uh, fx of uh, small x, uh, that is 1 minus e minus lambda x, you set it equals to u, uh, then you you start to, uh, to invert this pro process. So you have uh, 1 minus u, that will equal to e minus lambda x, uh, and then if you take a log on both sides, uh, then you have uh, a log on 1 minus u, uh, then this log will be give you minus lambda x. So you have uh, this expression here, and eventually you will have x equals to 1 over lambda uh, times uh, log of 1 minus u, and don't forget the minus sign. And then that's how you can uh, plan on to uh, this equation. This is the, uh, uh, the transformation that you are going to use for um, this uh, exponential random variable. So on computer, you first generate random numbers, uh, uniform random numbers from 0 to 1, and then you plug in this expression. Okay. Now, uh, this, this is actually the exact same formula I gave uh, here. So um, on this slide, I'm just telling you that suppose the fx inverse is this uh, expression, then you'll be able to generate uh, random numbers according to some distribution. And in fact, the, the y that you're generating is an exponentially distributed uh, random variable according to uh, this example. This diagram shows you the CDF of the exponentially uh, distributed random variables, and this is the inverse of the CDF. Okay, so now the last example is a discrete uh, random variable example where I have uh, four numbers, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and then I have a histogram, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 and 1. So essentially, I tell you the uh, the histogram. This is the histogram that I that I want, and then I want to generate numbers according to this histogram. Now, if you just generate uniform random numbers, uh, uh, the histogram that you're going to get will be flat. So this is not what you want. Uh, and so we can follow the same principle as what we did before by first computing the CDF. For discrete random variables, uh, computing the CDF is just the cumulative sum of the probability masses. So you have four states, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the probability values will be 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.1. Uh, you can add them up uh, to these uh, CDF values. This is the CDF of this particular example. Okay, it's a staircase function, as what we have learned before. And then you ask, what is the fx uh, inverse? Okay, what is fx inverse? And this is this is a little bit trickier because um, for staircase function, of course, you don't have any uh, any inversion formula because this function is not invertible. But you can still uh, sort of sort of do this inversion by by hand. Okay, uh, but before I do that. Uh, I want to uh, show you a um, some numbers. Okay, so the the g function that you, we are going to use, uh, of course, it has to go backward, right? So uh, you have uh, four ranges. You have what range? You have 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and one. These are the four numbers that you have on on the CDF. Okay, so um, without doing any calculation, what you should expect is that but since uh, the fx is giving you uh, these four values, okay, uh, that means uh, your 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 inversion has to be really um, placed onto these four values. Anything that is not on these four values, they will they will just um, uh, uh, live according to uh, some uh, one of these four numbers, okay. So you have these four numbers here, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and, and 1. Uh, what you should expect to see in a diagram in this inversion, which is fx inverse, is that um, you will have uh, 
and there are four values here. One would be a 0, and then 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and then, uh, and then 1. Okay, so these are the four values that you should expect to get. And then what? And then you, you, you the inverse, right? So if, if this is you, you want it to map back to uh, four values. So these four values will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? Uh, so here is the U axis, and then here is the, uh, the inverse mapping. And then now you ask, uh, how should this curve look like, right? Now, to look at this curve, what you should do is that uh, instead of looking at these um, uh, U values, you should actually look at 1, 2, 3, and 4. You go back to the CDF and see what, what are these 1, and 3, and 4. So the CDF says that I will have a 0, to 1, it will be like this. So you have a function like this. Okay? And then at 1, I'm going to make a jump. Okay? 2.1. So that would be this. And then at uh, 1 to 2, uh, I will stay at point 0.1. So 1 to 2, you will have this. And then at 2, you will have a jump to point 0.6. So at 2, you will have a jump to point 0.6. And, and so on. And then you have uh, this. And then this. Right, so you see that this is, this is actually how we can construct um, this uh, in, in inversion. Now, note that this inversion doesn't really exist because there's a staircase function, you cannot really define the inverse. But we can sort of follow this argument by tracing back to the uh, CDF and then redraw um, this uh, G. Okay, so this is your G because it's the fx inverse. So this is your G, and with this function, uh, we can plug in numbers now. What are the numbers? The numbers would be uh, between 0 and 0 0.1. Between 0 and 0 0.1, you have a value of 1. Okay. Between 0.1 and 0 0.6, 0 0.1 and 0 0.6, your value of 2. And so on, 3 and 4. So you have defined this uh, inversion. And this is your G. Uh, on computer, what you do is that um, you you first generate some random numbers. You call it a u equals to rand uh, of a thousand uh, a thousand samples, and then and then you check. Okay, so you can say uh, uh, you can have a for loop. Uh, there are four cases, so you can have um, uh, well, I think I think. Let me just write down the pseudo code, okay? So if if u is between um, uh, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.0, and 0 0.1, uh, then y equals to 1. Uh, and then if uh, u is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.6, then you define y equals to 2, and so on, okay? Of course, this can be programmed a lot more efficiently if you sit down and, and use the proper language. Okay, but this is the general idea. You generate the random numbers, uh, uniformly distributed random numbers, and then you check the cases uh, for these discrete random variables. This is actually the same as what we are doing uh, in the continuous case. In a continuous case, you do not need to divide it into cases um, because uh, this, formula, uh, this formula itself is already doing uh, the same than uh, in the discrete cases where you divide the cases. Um, in a discrete um, problem, uh, breaking into cases is actually carrying out this, the inversion process that we have just talked about. Okay, so um, to summarize, I hope you can see how we can generate random numbers according to an arbitrary distribution. The idea is to generate random numbers according to uniform distribution and then do this transformation. Now, the assumption is that, of course, you have access to the CDF of fx. Um, but in general, this is uh, quite doable because if you're working on a uh, training problem and you want to uh, verify your algorithm, uh, you should have access to the data. Uh, you should have access to the, the underlying ground truth model because you are doing this uh, verification. Of course, if you're doing a, tr a learning problem, you don't have access to a ground truth, uh, that's an inverse problem. Uh, and what I'm talking about is a forward problem uh, where 
you have already trained a model and then uh, you, you, you want to verify whether your model is correct or wrong, uh, in that case, you may want to synthesize some data according to, uh, to a distribution that you know. In this case, uh, you may want to follow the procedures that we're describing here. And, uh, and since you know what you're generating, you will have access to the fx. Now, in some problems, this fx may not come with a closed form expression, and it could be a non-parametric um, uh, equation, meaning that it, uh, you only have uh, values at certain data points. But that's not a problem, usually. Uh, you can follow this uh, same procedure here in a discrete case um, by looking at different ranges of values and then do this inverse mapping. Uh, so uh, even for non-parametric problems, uh, this kind of technique is generally applicable. So generating random numbers have multiple usages. Um, uh, I just talk about um, in terms of training. Uh, there are other usages. For example, you do want to generate random numbers uh, to, to, to synthesize noise. And in this case, uh, they, you may not just want to see and generate either Gaussian noise, you may want to generate some noise according to a certain pattern. Uh, then this transformation could also be useful. So I hope you have found this uh, lecture useful. Um, this is actually a very useful technique in data science, uh, in particular uh, doing a simulation and uh, doing this uh, verification of, of algorithms. Uh, now if you have any question, uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to send us an email. Uh, many of the derivations have been detailed in the uh, ebook, um, but if you still have questions, uh, don't worry, uh, send us an email. Uh, we will be very happy to help you out. Thank you very much.